What's up, everybody? BC, welcome back to another special episode of Supreme Being. Coming at you with a one-two interview today. Uh, as always, this podcast is sponsored by Team BC, my real estate team. If you guys need anything real estate or anything worldwide involved with real estate, go to teambcsold.com and shoot us a message and we can help you. Uh, number two, if you are involved in real estate and you want to be a part of my team and you're interested, go to partnerwithteambc.com. And lastly, if you're not a part of my Modern Success Program, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, you can check it out at briancasella.com or if you follow me on Instagram, it's the link in my bio. So I have another special guest today, Peter, my man. Actually, I just did a podcast with him. He has the I Love Success podcast. So I want to introduce him, welcome him to the show and let him tell you a little bit about himself because he's actually speaking this weekend at my event in Vegas. So I'm excited. I know he is too. So Peter, my friend, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, super happy to be here. Always fun to hang out with you, man. Awesome, dude. So uh, obviously you're newer, a little bit newer to my audience, yeah. maybe for a minute or two, just give a background leading up to now, kind of about your past and what you're yeah. doing now and get them up to speed a little bit. Awesome. So I'm a former world medalist in karate, been an athlete all my life, uh, gone through a lot of pain, a lot of failures, learned yeah. a lot from that. I worked in sales all my life and now I'm in real estate. Cool. Uh, for about six months, I think, something like that, full time. Nice. My first full quarter, I did uh, about eight million. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I remember when you originally interviewed me, you had told yeah. me you wanted to get your real yeah. license, so that's cool, man. Now, one question I want to ask you initially, because you're an athlete too, and you've been, you reached a really high level, was it karate that yeah, you did? Karate. Okay, karate, I remember. How has some of those things helped you? going into real estate and doing what you're doing now? Because I'm gonna ask you in a minute yeah. about the podcast and everything, yeah. but I wanna dive into that because yeah. so many people I think don't see, as I'm learning late in life, the beauty and everything you get out of like martial arts. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, of course. I mean, for me, martial arts, obviously I competed in fighting, yeah. but it's so much more than that. It's yeah. um, the art of expressing the human body. Bruce Lee said that. And I really believe that working on your mind, showing up, mm -hmm. As a black belt, it's not about punching anybody. It's about having a good character and working on that. And also how you show up when the shit hits the fan. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, it's been very helpful to been in a lot of tough situations because I've, as I've noticed now in a new field, yeah. in a new career, there's nothing that's easy, yeah. uh, but the great thing is that I can I can handle myself and I can mm -hmm. be calm when there's a storm. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah. nice. And I love that you said that. So you would agree that, because I, I talked a lot about this as an athlete, that it's really not just physical where people think it, there's a lot of mental anguish and, and you're broken down and you have your coaches, because I had coaches that would literally yell at me and yeah. I felt personally treated me more unfairly than everybody else. But later they would tell me, I see a lot of potential in you. That's why I'm doing it. So are there any, if we can say like one or two scenarios or moments back then where you were really pushed mentally that stood out to you that you think helped you today? Yeah, I mean, I remember this was 2008. Uh, I'm in a hotel room in Paris. I'm sitting in a corner crying. I'm devastated. And I'm, here I am, this strong fighter. I'm the best in Sweden, the best yeah. in my country. What is this? guy doing in a corner of a hotel room crying yeah. i was pushed to the limit and i did not perform we went to a competition called paris open which was a qualifier basically for the world championships and i sucked that day i got my ass kicked <laughs> um, yeah. and in like 30 seconds from a really good fighter and it's okay losing but i did not perform and mm. i was not in a good place at all and I remember we, we had a, that same night in the hotel room, everybody was supposed to go and talk to their coaches and have like a coaching session and yeah. talk about your performance. But I really didn't know what there was to talk about with me because there, there was right. no performance at all. Yeah. So I'm walking, I'm trying to be strong. You know, I don't want people to see me as weak because when we are athletes, now I'm a little bit older, more yeah. mature, I can show, yeah. um, like my weaknesses, but at that time I didn't want to show anybody that I was yeah. weak and I was crying. I was pushed to the limit in my work as well. And yeah, was not a good period, but I was like, I'm strong. So I went there and they're like, 
let's talk about your performance. And I said, I don't know what we should talk about. Like my dream is to go to the world championships. It was in Tokyo that year. And like for every person who does karate to be able to go to the birth land and compete that like once in a lifetime, you get that opportunity. Right, right. So they basically told me what happened. And I said, I don't know, I don't know. And one thing that stood out to me in that moment that, said, that they said, because they've seen all the hard work that I put in, mm -hmm. they said, Peter, we believe in you. This is not who you are. Uh, so go back and remember why are you doing this? Go back, have some fun, and let's see what happens next competition. Mm -hmm. So I thought a lot about that and I tried to regroup and, and work on my mindset and say, okay, let me go back to when I was a kid. It was not about winning medals or, or being elected for the world championships. It was about having fun and learning and becoming better. In that moment, I said, there's two things that is important, that people believe in you. If it's not yourself, at least someone else in those moments that are hard, uh, which I've had in, in, in real estate and my mentor, James uh, Suarez, that I'm working with now. And also the second part, have fun. That's why we're doing this, to have a good life, to have fun. Yeah. So those are the two things that like, I learned from that lesson and I've mm -hmm. seen in this a new career of mine. Dope, man. And that's awesome because I've actually, it's funny that you say have fun. I, I say that so much to people. So now we can say in, in the adult world, like doing sales and now doing real estate, how did you apply that? Because I'm sure that's stuck in your mind you know up until now how am i going to add fun to this because i have a tremendous time here he's been yeah. filming jose yeah. shout out to him right he does all our <laughs> camera work he's been filming and and that's something people are going to see on camera man they have a lot of fun so what are some things maybe you can share with the audience that you're doing to keep things fun yeah. now especially in a new career because you've only been in it six months yeah yeah so i would say let go of attachment to outcome mm -hmm. uh, my father is my sensei he always used to say when you grab sand on the beach in your palm, if you grasp too tight, you lose the sand. If your hands are too open, you'll also lose the sand. Have that balance, we can hold the sand. And I always try to think about that. Yeah. Uh, because if, if I'm only having fun and not serving, nothing really happens, I'm just a goofball, right? Yeah. But if I'm too tight and always it's about me, it's about my money, it's about doing this, no one wants to work with you. So find that, that balance. How do you find that balance? I think it's about putting yourself at last. You're here to serve, you're here to help, mm -hmm. and also see people. You know, this is, okay, we sell houses, but is that really what we're doing? In my mind, I've been in sales all my life, and what I've learned is that we're serving people and we're helping somebody, we're connecting with other human beings, right. which is much more than selling a house or selling a car or whatever it is. And I see that a lot, like when I correlate, because I brought up your podcast yeah. earlier, um, and I mentioned, you know, I, I really enjoyed the podcast that we did and that's one of the reasons I invited you was I felt like it had that you were listening and it wasn't just, oh, let's just say some basic stuff. It was cool and we did over an hour, right? So can you talk about how you've used that element now starting a podcast because yeah. you've been doing it for a while and you've interviewed some really successful people yeah. that if people find out, like Ryan Serhant, that's yeah. one person I saw, people would be like, whoa, he interviewed Ryan Serhant, like this podcast must be amazing. Yeah. Can you talk about starting the podcast and some of the things you were doing because You've got some good people on, man. Yeah. And a lot of people want to start a podcast. They want to do something like this, but they think that that's not achievable to them. But you've yeah. done it. Yeah. You're a doer. That's what I tell people. Before uh, you came today, I kind of announced it on Instagram. I was like, he's a doer. And I see that right away. What, what did you do? How was that? Because people look at that like Mount Everest. Oh, I can't do that. So, I mean, it all started to try to make it short. Like it all started 2012 in Sydney, Australia, when I became a world medalist. So after 23 years of training, in one moment, everything aligned and, and I performed to the best of my abilities. And the result of performing to the best of my abilities was the world medal. Nice. That was super fun and exciting and, and being in Australia, it was an amazing experience. Three weeks later, this was November, right before Christmas, I was working in sales for a company similar to Groupon. Yeah. And I got fired. They, we're gonna, this division is not making money even though I was doing very well. Would not, you guys are not making money, so we're gonna wow. quit this division. So they said, like, you can work on other projects. And I said, that's not for me. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start my business. I'm going to start creating something that I really love. And I'm going to do lectures, speaking, like I'm going to do this weekend. So I decided to write a book about goal settings because I was big into goal settings. I never had any talent for karate or anything, but I had the discipline and I was good at dividing into small tasks. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a book, started lecturing. Then I came here and I listened to a guy called Brian Rose, who has a show called London Real. And I just love the conversations he had with other people. Yeah. So I just told my dad, I'm going to start a podcast. He's like, podcast? What's that? <laughs> yeah, it's basically when you sit and talk to people, a kind of like a radio show. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any equipment. I just set, set the date and I asked a friend who was an Olympian. He's like, do you want to be on my show? He says, yeah, sure. Um, I borrowed some equipment from a friend. And it's so funny how the universe works that first day. Yeah. My friend that was supposed to help me, he brought another friend. So Malik, shout out to you. He brought Toby, who was had all this equipment. So he came, and I didn't even know that until like five minutes before. They set it all up, and I'm still working with that guy until today. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and I started loving yeah. having these conversations. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's basically... I'm, I'm just asking people, I'm reaching out in a creative way, say, hey, I wanna talk to you, I wanna share your story, because my mission is so much bigger than me. I wanna help, my first goal was to have help at least, uh, as many people as I possibly can, and then I met with Mark Devine, he's a Navy SEAL, really cool guy, and he said, I wanna help 10 million people, you gotta have measurable goals, and that's what I wrote about in my book, and then I'm, kind of a sucker myself and say as many people as possible. That could be two guys outside of McDonald's, right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I was like, shit, I'm gonna do 10 million. Right. Not because the number is important, Ryan. It's more like, hey, this is important for me to wake up, to show yeah. up, to invite people like you to sit uh, three hours in traffic, to come to talk to somebody or to, to do research, read books at night, mm -hmm. to learn, but to share it. Love it, man. Yeah, yeah man. you have that clear target, yeah. right? And that's so important. So I would imagine now doing what you've been doing, because I always tell people you have to be out there rubbing elbows with people, meeting people, right? Providing value, which the podcast does. Is there any, maybe one or two things you want to speak about for the audience in regards to maybe opportunities that you've created from now building this network of people that you've met and podcasted with or maybe something random, like you said, yeah. you brought your friend and then his other friend brings the equipment. Yeah. Has anything like that happened as a result of your podcast up until now that you can discuss? I'm here, man. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm here. I'm going to speak at your event. I, I'm invited to many amazing things. I'm, I'm building amazing friendships not because I have a podcast because I connect with people when I yeah. talk to them I'm interested in their story it, and I think you don't ha need to have a podcast mm -hmm. to do that you can be in sales you can be in anything if you connect with people and truly listen to them you'll get friends yeah. and being authentic with that and that's that's why we're here right now mm -hmm. uh, just because of that you saw something in me and you said hey come over and I said, and I was like, it's always when you get a, a question when your schedule is always busy. Yeah. You always yeah. think about, should I do it or should I don't? Yeah. But I'm like, fuck, this is what I do. If I don't say yes to a great opportunity to be with amazing people, what is life worth? Just because right. I'm busy, right. you can always make time. Yeah. Yeah, and I tell people the stars never align. It's never going to be you just happen to have that spot. I'm like, hey, you want to yeah. come here? And, you know, that's very rare, right? You brought up something important, connecting with people, right? I did a meetup last night for free here for about an hour, hour and a half, and half of that probably related around that subject. Yeah. Was that always something you could do, or was that a skill that you forged and something that you developed over the years, especially being in sales, because I know yeah. you were in sales. Uh, I mean, I could always connect with like guy friends in a way because yeah. I was uh, I was nice and I I never really I wanted to be liked yeah. because when I was a kid I was overweight I was bullied so I did everything to be liked mm -hmm. so I I always had some friends but not always friends that cared the most of me you know it was right. must be, it was easy to hang out with me because I was molding and adaptable and I didn't really stand up for who I was. Right. Uh, what I learned though was 
when I lost all my friends and say, hey, I'm gonna be who I am, I, I got a lot of time to practice karate. And with being good at something came a little bit of a conf confidence, right. but I still couldn't get any girls, which was my main focus, you know, when I was 15. Was the main focus for every guy. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> so a friend gave me a book yeah. called The Game. I don't know if you guys have read it. And of course. We, and we tr start trying those things and it worked a little bit, but in the game to talk about day two and like really having the game, you, you can talk to somebody, get a number, but if you have no real life, no real personality, it doesn't matter how, yeah. how that initial interaction is always, it's like being in sales and say, I have this amazing car or this amazing house and you show up and it's a fucking dump, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that was basically who I was. Yeah. Uh, so instead of just focusing on that, the game talked about developing yourself and that's how my interest started for like reading books mm -hmm. about amazing people, biographies and, mm -hmm. and, and learning that. And that's basically what I'm doing now. I'm studying mm -hmm. success to better myself and also help other people. That's awesome, man. And I remember a uh, mystery quoted that he said, do not let the pickup arts define your life, let it enrich your life. And that's huge because I'm super connected in that world, man. A lot of my friends, I've met, you know, Mystery and all those guys, yeah. and I'm still connected with a lot of them, so I'm not surprised <laughs> yeah. that you brought that up, right? Because I remember reading the game and the Mystery Method and all that, and actually it's some of my most recommended books to people because of that, right? Yeah, people get caught up in the just the story stuff, but you hit the nail on the head and you were intelligent enough to see it. Hey, I can't just play this clown. I need to actually have real value behind it, which is what it says to do, yeah. right? That's incredible, man. So. Obviously, you're going to come speak at this event. You're doing your thing. About eight million in the first quarter yeah. in real estate. It's incredible for volume. What What's the next year? What are you planning for the next year, two years? What does that look like? I mean, I want to I want to be to the best of my abilities. I have I have big goals. I want to help a lot of families find a home, and I want to make a lot of impact with my podcast, being on stage. But most importantly, what I'm aiming to be something that my my yoga instructor told me it's like put your head in your heart so it's cool I have this like we can talk numbers and all of that but most important for me is like putting my head in in my heart and trying to show up in the world as a good human being not just saying that but really trying how do I act when no one sees me where when I'm not on a podcast when I'm interacting in my everyday life you know how, how do I show up to to the cleaning lady or a uh, or uh, the best man in the world. Is there a difference or am I authentically lovingly, loving to people? How do I love myself? Do I take care of my mind? Do I take care of my body? Do I take time for reading, for my relationships? Mm -hmm. And all of that. So that's my main focus to, to show up in the world and put my head in my heart. Dope. Love that, yeah. man. So obviously I know I'm going to do a second episode with you because I keep my episodes <laughs> a little shorter than yeah. you, dude. Um, right now, obviously, you're going to be at my event, but... You know, I know you have your book, right? Yeah. So if people want to reach out to you, they want to connect with you, they want to find your podcast, they want to find your book, where do they go? Uh, so easiest Instagram, Peter Jumrukovsky. Not the easiest to spell, but hopefully we'll That's put a link. That's why I didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I recognize that. <laughs> it's hard. I've had a lot of variations. You can check out ilovesuccess.co, okay. uh, which is my website where you have like 160 something interviews. Last week I released one with you. Have a lot of cool people sharing their stories. Uh, so yeah, connect with me there. You can email me at info at IL Success if you wanna talk goal settings or whatever. Cool, I'll put that all that stuff in the description. So Peter, my friend, thank you for being on the show. Obviously we'll do a, a episode two because he's a <laughs> featured guest. Uh, you guys heard it here first. Team BC sold for all your real estate needs. Um, and check out Modern Success because you have another speaker. We got two interviews today with speakers from the event. Pablo's going to speak too. Oh, awesome. It's going to be great. We'll see you guys in Vegas. It's going to be lit. <laughs> Peace.